Hi everyone, I'm Fran Drescher, the founder and visionary of the Cancer Schmancer Movement, and we are presenting a very special series for you called Corona Care For You. During this time, we want to present you with the most cutting edge, outside of the box, thinking medical doctors who are going to take you from feeling hopeless and helpless to empowered with knowledge and motivated to perhaps change your life and rebuild your body so that you can endure any kind of interference, whether it be a coronavirus or something else. So today we are extremely lucky, and I am so personally excited to welcome Dr. Mark Hyman to us. Welcome, Dr. Hyman. Thanks for having me, Fran. Call me Mark, please. <laughs> oh, Mark, you know, Mark, let me just tell our viewers. I mean, he is the head of functional medicine at the Cleveland Clinic. He has written more best-selling, New York Times best-selling books than I have hairs on my head. Everything he does, he is really one of the pioneers and innovators of this whole functional medicine uh, food is medicine, and uh, how you live equals how you feel. All of the things that we at Cancer Schmanza uh, talk about all the time and are trying to bring you. Now we have the pleasure of talking to one of the pioneers of this whole new uh, pivoting way of thinking about our health and our lifestyle and what we're putting in our bodies and all of that good stuff. So welcome, Mark. <laughs> yeah, thank you. You know, Mark, I actually uh, listened to uh, your podcast, The Doctor's Pharmacy, spelled with an F. Yeah, right. Pharmacy. <laughs> and uh, I'm just, I just love it so much. I, I just love it so much. So uh, why don't we just dive in from that point of view? Because, you know, for you, the connection of food and how we feel is imperative for us to be able to have a vibrant and optimal uh, body, immune system, everything. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, I think most of us don't realize the power we have to regulate our health and particularly our immune systems. Uh, and I think right now, more than ever with COVID-19, people are, are concerned about getting sick, about actually how their immune system is working. And the beautiful thing is we can have enormous influence on what our immune system does by what we eat, by our sleep, by exercise, by how we deal with stress, by our connections and relationships, by our nutritional levels and status of our nutrients. All these things play an enormous role. And what people don't realize today is that you can make yourself more resilient in the face of COVID-19. And why is that important? Well, Fran, 12% of Americans are metabolically healthy. That means 88% are not. And what does that mean? Well, metabolic health is where you don't have blood sugar, blood pressure, cholesterol problems, and you're not overweight. Well, 88% of us are not metabolically healthy. And those Isn't people- that pathetic? It's terrible. Where, and, are we still like number 35 in the, on the list of healthy nations by the World Health Organization? Uh, we're, we're like, I think we're 43rd in life expectancy. And I think we, we're 11th out of 11 industrialized, top industrialized nations in healthcare outcomes, into mortality, life expectancy, all kinds of healthcare metrics that we look at. And it's, it's, it's a disgrace. And, and the, what we're finding about COVID-19 is that it, it targets people who are metabolically unhealthy. If you're overweight or obese or you're chronically ill, which is also metabolically unhealthy, you are at much higher risk of getting sicker and dying. In fact, 97% of people who die from COVID-19 are metabolically unhealthy, overweight. And this is something that people can do something about. And the beautiful thing about COVID-19 is it has put us all at home Stop just going out to eat junk food and allowing us to cook more at home. And we can do it either well or we can get into trouble by eating comfort foods that are actually making us more vulnerable to COVID-19. So I think it's time for everybody to double down on health. And the beautiful thing is it doesn't take a long time. It literally in a few weeks, you can transform your metabolic health by dramatically changing your diet. We see this all the time in, in our clinic at Cleveland Clinic at the Ultra Wellness Center, I have a practice. And the data shows this. I mean, if you're if you're severely obese and you have diabetes and you get a gastric bypass, within a couple of weeks, your diabetes goes away. Not because you're thin, but because you change the quality of the food you're eating. So we all have that power and now's the time to focus on that. What do you think are the biggest culprits that I feel like because of greed-driven industry, 
we as a uh, population are generally numbed out and dumbed down to be herded like cattle off a cliff. Yeah. And we're being seduced into a lifestyle that is A, completely unsustainable, B, highly compromising of our health. Yeah. And, you know, so what would you say are the things that people are mindlessly indulging in per using their hard earned dollars to support this big business that actually is hurting them oh hey, friend you opened up a can of worms there <laughs> well, <laughs> well I, I, <laughs> in general you don't have to like name labels but yeah, uh in general well, i got it what are we doing what well, are we I wrote, a book. I wrote a, a book about the food yeah i wrote a book about the food system and it's called food fix how to save our health our economy our communities and our planet one bite at a time is that yeah. your newest book that's yeah. out there yes right here right here. let me see foodfix.com right you could go to foodfix.com food, no you go to foodfixbook.com oh right foodfixbook.com i'm so proud of myself and, and laid out you know, <laughs> how how we've ended up here which is all the statistics i mentioned and it has to do with our food system being designed to produce a ton of starchy sugary calories to a mass audience which is great for a hungry population that was in the 50s and now is killing us because we produce enormous amounts of starch and sugar. It's turned into all sorts of ultra processed foods, which are highly refined. They have really harmful effects on our biology. It's 60% of our calories. And, and they didn't know when they started making these foods how bad they were, but now we know. So we kind of got to deal with it. And, it. and at the same time that it's hurting our, our biology, it's also hurting our environment and our climate. And food, our food system, that we grow food, process it, distribute it, all that, and even waste it is the number one cause of climate change more than than fossil fuels. So, yeah. so, so these big companies oh, are, are you know, producing foods that are biologically addictive, that make us crave them and hungry. And it, it, you know, we've lost the ability to relate to our food directly. We buy food that's made in factories. We, even if we eat at home, we probably buy something that was made in a factory and we heat up in the microwave. And people have lost cooking skills. And it's not by uh, accident, it's by design by the food industry. Remember, you deserve a break today. Remember Betty Crocker? She was a fake person. She wasn't real. My mom had the Betty Crocker cookbook and a little picture of Betty on the front. She was an invention of the food industry. And they put in the recipes, you know, one can of Campbell's cream of mushroom soup or one, you know, thing of Ritz crackers sprinkled on your broccoli casserole or, you know, it's like, and so they basically hijacked the American kitchen and that's led to the problem we have now. So I think, I think we, we do have to pay attention to the challenges of the food system. Some of these are unintended consequences. Some of them are by design. And I think that the targeting and the marketing of, of the minority population in this country and of the uh, low socioeconomic groups is just unconscionable because they are the most affected. And you see the populations being ravaged by COVID-19. It's African-American populations, Hispanic populations. That's Native why American I get so enraged I, when I see um, like top uh, pop stars, recording artists, and they're taking these enormous uh, music tours that are being underwritten by cola companies. Yeah, right. And it's like, you know, you are in a position to be a major influencer. What are you doing? Why are you taking money from these uh, companies that are actually hurting an entire generation, your fans? Yeah, yeah. I asked, I asked like, the wake up. When you're so famous, you have a responsibility. Yeah, they throw so much money at them and it's, it's hard to refuse. It's like tens of millions of dollars. Well, uh, let me tell you something. I've refused a lot of money and I don't have the money that, you know, some of these pop stars have, but you gotta walk the talk. Yeah. What is this life if not your word? <laughs> A hundred percent. I agree. I a hundred percent agree. And I think, you know, it would be great if celebrities got on the bandwagon and, and a lot of them are, you know, like uh, Tom Brady has been completely unwilling to support any processed food or junk. Yes. Food. I've switched oh, teams okay. now because he has. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Beyonce did for a while, but now she's kind of signed off all, all that. So the, the people are coming around and they're incredible 
athletes like Novak Djokovic and others, Federer, who don't take money from the big food companies, which they could and they're offered. So I think it, it, it is challenging and I think we need a complete overhaul of our food system. And I, so I started actually a campaign to try to change the food system called Food Fix Campaign. It's a nonprofit and an advocacy group to change policy in Washington. And, and it's uh, ambitious, it's uh, big, but uh, you know, I figured, you know, go big or go home. You gotta, you gotta dream big. And, and I think we are, we are really uh, have an incredible team that did Bono's One campaign that you know, raised $87 billion for AIDS and poverty relief in Africa and a very small amount of donations. And, and that's exactly what we're doing to help change the food system. How do we focus on the policies that need to change? I lay that all out in the book and how we can do it as individuals, as businesses, and what policies need to change. And it's, it's yeah, I think people you are work it out for you, man, because you know, these politicians are really, I think, uh, very beholden to these deep pocketed yeah. lobbyists who are telling them what to do. And that's why uh, we at Cancer Schmancer, you know, feel that our movement has to come from the ground up and, you know, to get people to radicalize and use their hard earned dollars uh, to um, put, you know, uh, their vote and their protest and what they buy because that's the only way they're going to hear it because the bottom line is the bottom line i agree i agree we vote with our dollars we vote with i our mean it's work. good that you try and you know get out there in washington i was very instrumental in getting um the first gynecologic cancer education and awareness act passed by unanimous consent and was written up twice in the congressional record but you know, everyone has a mother or a sister, and a, a woman's cancer is very compelling. So I was able to unify, uh, at, you know, the party gap uh, with a very compelling personal story. But, uh, you know, this is a whole nother can of worms. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, I agree. So but the just... tentacles of... Um, of uh, greed is so yeah. far reaching. It's true, it's true. But what I really was shocked when I went to Washington was on both sides of the aisle, the level of education about this was so low. So they're only hearing one side of the story. And what we're trying to do is introduce a different story. And I've been just actually amazed at the openness on both sides of the aisle to the messages we're sharing about the role of the food system in so many of our global crises. You know chronic disease. It's, it's, a, it's a pandemic. You know, it's like the, the obesity pandemic. And now they're becoming more relevant because of how COVID is interacting with that. The economic burden of it, the climate issues, the environmental issues, the social justice issues. Our soldiers are not healthy in the battlefield and we can't recruit new soldiers because they're unhealthy. 70% get rejected from the military because they're unhealthy. And this is a, a national security crisis. So our leaders are very interested in openness, and I, I was sort of shocked because I was very skeptical about Washington. I'm like, no, this is not going to go anywhere. But I, I think, you know, if you if you have the right message and the right communications and the right policies and the right strategy, things happen and things change. So, you know, we, we never thought we would see civil rights or women's rights or gay rights and, you know, stuff changes. Yes. And, you know, the good thing is, is that you're going with science. You've actually done a lot of uh, work that uh, supports this position. You know, I go with a lot of, pa and I would, by the way, be happy to go with you anytime. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> uh, you know, I go and I say, you know, listen to your inner voice as closest to your creator. You know what you should be eating and not eating. Think. Well, people you don't know. know. You're, you're for somebody somewhere to tell you, that's part of the by design dumbed down. Yeah. It is. It's, I think people just don't know. I, I often have the view that, you know, people just know what to eat and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's just they don't do it because they just don't want to eat. They want but to the eat. fact that there hasn't been a concerted educational program uh, in school even as core education how to be healthy, how to live healthy. The fact that there's a, such a noticeable omission of this very discussion across all news platforms yes. tells you that 80% of their ad dollars is from pharmaceutical companies. I know. So they're not going to tell you that, you know, if you eat differently and remove all the toxins from your home, you'll have a fighting chance against this virus. They're not going to tell you that. 
Every well, I actually, I just, American should have been gotten a first aid kit with a large bottle of vitamin C, D3, zinc, rubbing alcohol at 65%, a mask, gloves, and a pamphlet by Dr. Mark Hyman telling you how to live your life better. I love that. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> That's what we should have been doing. But instead, all the focus is put on, you know, that the big farmers are going to somehow save the day with this vaccine. What are we going to get vaccinated for every single virus that comes out of these hell well, here, holes of livestock factories? Well, here's the bad news. Um, what's really interesting about vaccines is they don't work as well in people who are at most risk of death from coronavirus. So they don't work as well if you're overweight or obese, and they don't work as well if you're older or have a chronic illness. So the very and it was my understanding after talking to uh, Bobby Kennedy that uh, in in the past a lot of these experiments done to fight some other strain of coronavirus proved that once you got inoculated with it, if you got it you got it worse. Yeah, there, there is, there, this is not just for coronavirus, but vir viruses and vaccines aren't always a home run. So a vaccine can actually cause immunity like a measles vaccine, but it can also make you more susceptible or actually worsen your, your risk of getting it. And so not all vaccines are the same and we don't know how this one's gonna play out. So we can test it, we can try it, but you know, this is, this is, this is unprecedented and I think the, the best vaccine against COVID-19 is taking care of your own health and your family's health and your community's health. And that's something we all have control over. And I, I wrote a blog about how to do this called, uh, you know, I think it's called a Functional Medicine Approach to COVID-19. You just go to drhyman.com forward slash C19 and you can read about what to eat and the, the various kinds of resources and tools to help uh, boost your immune system. So actually, you know, I, I spend most of my life for running around the road and busy I actually more healthy now than I've been in years because I'm exercising every day. I'm eating healthy home cooked food every day. I'm not having to try to figure out how to eat when I'm on the, on the road. I'm not eating the airports. So I feel like this is actually a time when I've doubled down on my health and make sure I take my body. And that's the opportunity. You are taking advantage of it, but every American that's in lockdown right now should be taking advantage of that too, should be looking at it as an opportunity to start questioning how can I be healthier so I don't become victimized by something like this? Can I ask you something, Dr. Hyman? Because, uh, you know, I have to admit, even though I'm embarrassed to tell this to you, I've been eating a lot of imported Italian organic pasta. <laughs> you know, your thing is all about uh, protein and vegetables. And so can we speak to that? Because I need to hear it as much as any, any of our viewers right now. Well, you know, it depends. First of all, if you're gluten sensitive, uh, then you probably don't want to eat gluten. And there's a lot of other pastas that are great. There's chickpea pastas, lentil pastas that are higher in protein. Uh, and they're actually quite, quite delicious. Uh, Italian pasta. Are you of the school of thought that nobody should be eating uh, any kind of wheat, even if it's no, no, wheat? No, I would, say, I would say don't eat American wheat. <laughs> I would right. Say, no, I don't. But if you eat Italian wheat, not unless it says it's strain of GMO wheat. and organic. Right, right, and that that matters because they spray with glyphosate. It's super starchy in America, and it's also the amount. If you go to a restaurant in Italy and they give you like a four ounce little serving of pasta, it's like this big. <laughs> Here it's like you get a plate like this. Like that's. <laughs> so, I don't know what you're eating, Fran. If it's like the little Italian sized portions or the American portions or the Midwest. <laughs> I eat the Italian sized portions until it's done. And that could be over two days. Oh no. <laughs> I know. I know. You know if you're if you're otherwise healthy and you take care of yourself, a little bit of al dente, you know, Italian pasta is not terrible. It's it's really the 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 quantity of starch and sugar we have in America. We eat 152 pounds of sugar per person per year and 133 pounds of flour. It's almost a pound of flour and sugar a day for every man, woman, and child in America. Now, I'm not eating that much, so somebody is, must be eating a lot more. Maybe you're a part of that problem, but I don't know. <laughs> but there's a lot, of, there's a lot of, of enormous quantities of this that are flooding so our it's body. not even just, I mean, I don't eat, uh, I'm not really a sweet, I'm more of a savory. So I'm not really eating a lot of sugar or cakes or cookies. Yeah, yeah, right. I never eat processed food or anything like that. But I do like, I do like my pasta. 
That's okay. A little bit's fine. It's just the <laughs> everything else. If you're not, the like, yeah, and you're not. That's what I gotta think. <laughs> but it really, it really, you know, if you're metabolically really unhealthy and you're you're pretty healthy, it's a lot harder to tolerate starch. And even a little bit, if you're diabetic or pre-diabetic, it's not that great. Um, and when you think about the numbers, this is shocking to me still. One in two Americans, every other American has diabetes or pre-diabetes. Like that's just a staggering statistic. But do you think that that comes more from corn syrup, sweetened sodas and processed foods? It's all of it. It's, it's not just yeah. the sugar though. People need to understand that if you have, if you have a piece of bread or a few tablespoons of sugar, the bread's actually worse for you. <laughs> Seriously, because it has a higher glycemic index. Even whole wheat bread isn't great. So when you grind the flour down to a fine granules, it's absorbed very quickly. Al dente pasta is not so bad because it, it seems to be absorbed a little bit slower. And if you, you know, if you don't eat that much of it and you have- I do have it al dente and I don't mix it with meat. I have it with vegetables. Uh, but you're a big proponent of, um, you know, eating a lot of protein to help uh, your body be strong and fit, correct? Not exactly. I'm, I'm into eating the right amount of high quality protein. And okay. Most of our diet should be plant foods. Most of our diet, 80% of our plate should be vegetables. And I think, you know, small amounts of starch and protein are fine. The problem is, you know, the, the, issues as you get older get worse with protein. You need more high quality protein and high quality protein, unfortunately means animal protein as you get older because you lose muscle. And that is the disease of aging. We think it's heart disease, cancer, diabetes, but they're all caused by loss of muscle, which then generates a whole cascade of hormonal problems. So if you lose muscle and you build fat, guess what happens? Your estrogen goes up, whether you're a guy or a woman, and that can promote cancer. And you have a whole other set of problems that go wrong, like your insulin levels go up and that causes cancer. So it's really important to keep your muscle up and that's partly by the protein quality as well as you know strength training and lifting weights. Really a specific kind of exercise. So how many grams would you say we should be eating? Because we had a doctor on who I, I believe in her uh, early um, medical career worked under you. Uh, her name was Gabrielle Lyon. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I so hope. she uh, is a very proud disciple of yours and, uh, you know, kind of speaks uh, your what you preach. And uh, her thought was that at every meal you needed a minimum of four grams of protein uh, per meal, you know, like... 30 grams, I think you meant. She meant. Oh, 30? It's 30, yeah. So, oh, okay. So, you know, it's basically a palm sized serving of protein that is equivalent for anybody because if you're Shaquille O'Neal, your palm is very big. If you're a little kid, your palm is very small. So a palm sized piece of protein is about what you need at every meal. And the reason is that, especially as you age, protein synthesis declines. And in order to keep your muscle up, you need a certain amount of protein. Now, the amounts we say are, you know, 0.8 grams per kilo or know, 1.2 grams per kilo. There's a lot of debate in the science, but it looks like for optimal health, we might need one to 1.2. And if you're an athlete, maybe 1.6 grams per kilo, which, you know, it, you know, it, depending on the size you are, it's, you know, if you're 90, I'm like 80 some kilos. So that's 80 grams of protein a day, which would be an average of, you know, 25 to 30 per meal. Now you can get protein from lots of sources. You can get it from plant proteins. You can get it from animal proteins. Uh, and I think you can mix it up. And I, I definitely have a lot of plant-based meals, but I think, I think that it's important to understand what you're doing. You can't just eat pasta as a plant-based meal. You have to have nuts and seeds and, you know, the right kinds of beans that are high in protein. For example, lupini beans are fantastic because they're very low in starch and they're very high in protein. And you can have them as a snack. You can buy them pre-cooked. They're really great. My favorite new snack. Mm, hemp seeds are also very high in uh, protein and, and supposedly quite healthy. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, that's great. Any kind of seeds, nuts, those are great. Mm. And of so, course, the animal foods, you know, they, they, there are, uh, you know, important considerations. You want to not eat any factory farmed animal foods. 
you want to try to source. Okay, that, that let me just underscore that because you just said a mouthful. And now with the, um, for our viewers at home, I really want you to pay close attention to what the doctor is about to say because, you know, it's really important that you understand that the quality of what you're eating is imperative. Mm -hmm. So you're distinguishing the kind of protein and you were saying that we really have to stay away from industrial farmed animal protein. Yeah, and I think the quality is, is across the board is key, whether it's protein, carbs, or fat, right? So broccoli is a carbohydrate, and so is a donut, right? Crisco is a fat, but so is sardines. Olive oil, okay. Right, or olive oil, very different. You know, quality protein matters. And, and what we're learning about the protein issue is that regeneratively raised animals are not only good for the environment and help to reduce climate change, not add to it, um, not only are they more humanely treated, not only do they restore biodiversity and ecosystems, but the quality of the protein is much higher. The nutrient density is higher. And I'm having a guy on my podcast, Fred Provenza, who's an uh, animal scientist from, uh, I think, uh, Utah State University, who has researched the phytonutrients in regeneratively raised beef or grass-fed beef, meaning that they are finding these beneficial plant chemicals in the animal food which is kind of crazy when you think about it, because you're not what you eat, you are whatever you are You're eating. eating is eating, exactly. And we're not even getting enough soil when you're eating animals that are being uh, fed GMO grain, which is unnatural for them. Have you heard of that uh, Wild Idea Bison Company? I started oh. ordering meat from them, and yeah. their whole thing is regenerating the earth and the soil and the prairie. And these animals, they're buffalo, living like they're wild buffalo. And uh, the way that they regenerate and break up the soil yeah. and the way they live and the nutrient-rich quality of their meat is unsurpassed. And Absolutely. in every way, including the way the meat is packaged, uh, that it comes to you, it's yeah. just... And that's a good point, because there are places on... Across the board. Yeah. You know, conscientious farming. That's great. And then there are places you can get stuff really relatively inexpensively directly from the ranchers or farmers like Butcher Box or Mariposa Ranch or the company you mentioned that have, you know, Thrive Market, all source regeneratively raised or grass-fed or organic animal protein that's higher quality and it doesn't cause all the inhumane treatment of animals. It doesn't lead to the environmental and climate issues. And it's sort of a win-win all around. And by the way, Fran, I don't know if people realize this, but, you know, whatever you're eating, if you're eating vegetarian or vegan, the very active agriculture is massively destructive. You know, we destroy the habitats of the animals that live there. And in an average year, uh, this is a scientific study that's been published, I quoted, I think, in my book, there are 7 billion animals that die every year as a consequence of plant agriculture. So whether you're growing broccoli or you're growing potatoes or you're growing corn or soy, it's, this is a naturally destructive act. So you might not be directly killing the animals by eating them, but you're certainly part of a destructive cycle. It is, you know, what do they said in the Lion King, the circle of life. So you can't get out of that. And is that also because of uh, the uh, pesticides and herbicides that are used? Worse. That, that makes it even worse. That makes it even worse. You know, the, 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 the loss of biodiversity is massive. And that's what's so exciting about regenerative agriculture. When you put animals in an ecosystem and you restore the ecosystem, all the wild animals come back, all the birds come back, all the rodents come back, all the butterflies come back, all the insects come back, and you have a thriving live ecosystem. Yeah, we have to start looking at nature and stop imposing our demented ideas of how things are supposed to be because it's not working out, people, and it's completely <laughs> unsustainable. Look at what That's a prairie gonna... is like without human intervention, a prairie. I, I go on safari, Mark, annually because it's the only thing that fully restores me and recalibrates me where I observe a um a wild situation that's unimposed by human intervention and uh it just makes me feel so whole and happy to see the way the world can be uh without us trying to manipulate it and abuse it yeah it's true we can get back and that's what's sort of interesting about COVID 19 is sort of 
put us all in, in sort of time out. It's like God's time out for being bad humans. And, you know, we're, we're seeing the, you know, nature come back. We're seeing climate improve. We're seeing environmental air quality improve. We're seeing habitats get restored. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing. And we, yeah, nobody uh, needs us but us. That's right. The planet would do just fine without I think you're right. I think We don't do anything positive for the planet no. at all. It's so crazy, and we don't even notice that. And that also is by design. I mean, we've come so far from our indigenous ancestry who did live closer to the earth and more connected. And, you know, even the Bible describes us as shepherds. We should yeah. be... Yeah. You know, we should shepherd this earth, not take so advantage of it and abuse it like it's, you know, just an endless resource. It's not. Yeah, that's true. Well, this is great. Well, you know, I can't, uh, I mean, I, I'm so thrilled and I just love you so much and you look fantastic. <laughs> and I look forward to us marching on Capitol Hill together. And uh, I hope that everybody goes to um, the pharmacy uh, podcast. Doctor's Pharmacy. Doctor's, yeah. Doctor's, Doctor's Pharmacy. Pharmacy. Yeah, Doctor's Pharmacy. Yeah, if you go. As you can it's... see, I'm not one of those talk show hosts that have all those cue cards and a whole group of people around me. I'm here by myself with my dog trying to do my best. <laughs> But uh, it is, yes, The Doctor's Pharmacy. It's a podcast that I subscribe to, absolutely love. You know, I'll lie in bed, I'll listen to it. I'm in the car, I'll listen to it. I'm cooking in the kitchen, I'll listen to it. And I'm learning. So you're doing an amazing service because, you know, we are on the precipice of a new dawn, Mark, and you are one of the leaders of that. And if everybody can just realize that this is the way we enter the 21st century, you know, we're only 20 years in, and historically what happens at the beginning of the century sets the trajectory for the entire uh, century. And uh, now is the time, and this is the opportunity. I have had some pretty serious negative things happen in my life, but there have always been silver linings. There have always been lessons to be learned, and this is no different. So we do have an opportunity here, and also this book that sounds absolutely amazing. I can't wait to read it. Foodfixbook.com. Get the book, listen to the podcast, and uh, start putting Dr. Mark Hyman on your radar because everything he says I'm totally down with and appreciate your contribution to the revolution. And uh, that's really what's gonna happen. And it's gonna happen from the ground up. So uh, people, it's up to you, each one teach one. And all you have to do is change yourself. Don't even get all, you know, fachaded about how everything is wrong with the world. Don't worry about that. Just you change yourself, change your family, change your home, and each one teach one. Oh. So, so I'm Fran Drescher from the Cancer Schmancer Movement. We're very grateful to have been speaking with Dr. Mark Hyman. We wish you good health and long life. Please keep checking in because we are constantly adding new and interesting interviews like this one for your benefit and knowledge is power. So get out there because you are the foot soldiers for the revolutionary change towards good health. Let's shift this paradigm people and get healthy again. Mwah. Peace. Hi everyone, it's me, Fran Drescher. Well, I hope you enjoyed Corona Care for You. And if you did, please think about making a donation to us at cancerschmancer.org slash donate. Like so many nonprofits, we've had to cancel all of our fundraising events. So it's really up to you to help keep us going. We depend on your donations, your support, and your love. There is no donation that's too small, and we are grateful to anything that you feel comfortable giving. And continue to come in to the Cancer Schmanza Corona Care For You series because we are constantly posting new content, and we hope that it's helpful to you and your family. Don't forget to donate. We really appreciate your support. Thank you.